very first episode of Catching Up with the Cues, presented by AmeriQ. I'm Jack McFarlane. I'm sort of kind of with Will Scott, I guess. Uh, but why don't we skip the whole quarantine, you know, run-of-the-mill chit-chat and just get right into what this show is. Because this will be a checkup on anything and everything Syracuse Athletics, from player interviews to really just talking about the hot topics, Will. Yeah, and you know, it's great that we're going to have the opportunity to catch up with these Syracuse athletes to see what they've been up to and look back on their last season and look ahead to next season. Yeah, and we'll highlight what happened in this past academic year athletically. Uh, something that just happened this past weekend, two guys from the Syracuse football team selected in the NFL draft, Alton Robinson. He went in the fifth round to Seattle, Sterling Hoffrichter, because punters are people too. He went in the seventh round of the Atlanta Falcons. And Sterling Hoffrichter getting a shout out on Instagram from the popular rapper Offset. He's saying, welcome to the A, Sterling. So that's definitely exciting stuff for Hoffrichter. You know you've made it in life when Offset gives you a shout out on Insta. Is that right, Jack? Absolutely. So you've got Offset shouting out Sterling Hoffrichter. You've got Quavo in that picture with Georgia kicker Rodrigo Blankenship. Now all you need is takeoff to find a special team savant and and we'll go from there. But, uh, you know, those were the two guys that were drafted before this. Well, right after this, uh, this undrafted free agent frenzy got underway. And right before the last dance aired on Sunday night, there were four other Syracuse football players signed to free agent deals. You had Tristan Jackson, Sean Riley, uh, Evan Adams and Kendall Coleman. Who stands out? Well, it's got to be Kendall Coleman, right? Because this is a guy that is getting to go home to Indianapolis. He's from there. He's going to play for the team. He grew up rooting for his hometown team. So that's such an exciting moment for his family, for him. And the Colts are getting one heck of a player. Another Syracuse defensive end going to the Indianapolis Colts. If he has a career like Dwight Franey, that'll be great. Uh, the guy that stands out to me is Sean Riley because Bill Belichick gets yet another sub six foot slot guy. I mean, Sean Riley's going to turn into a pro bowler with that trajectory. That's right. And it's going to be interesting to see you know, who he has throwing passes to him. But, you know, Bill Belichick's going to find some way to work Sean Riley into that system. I think it's a perfect fit for the speech to Riley. Another thing we're going to do uh, in this show is we'll pick your brain a little bit and we'll throw you a weekly trivia question. And I know you got it geared up right now, Will. Yeah, and it's perfect because we just talked about the NFL draft and this trivia question is about the NFL draft. So, Jack, let me ask you, who is the highest drafted Syracuse NFL player ever? And we'll reveal the question later on the show. But that's something to think about. Plenty of great Syracuse players that have been professional football players. So, Give you some time to think about that one, Jack. Yeah, I mean, the two that jump to mind right away are McNabb and Jim Brown. Um, I'm going to lock in the greatest athlete of all time, Jim Brown. What do you think? I think it's Ernie Davis. Okay. I'm going to go with Ernie Davis. Now, the year, you have, to, you have to tell me the year and the team as well. Oh, the so, year and the yeah. team, too? I can't do that. I mean, McNabb I, I is say, really I good. would say Ernie Davis, number one overall, and this is – by the by the Cleveland Browns but I can't I'm trying to think about the year I'm going to go ahead and say 1968. All right I'll say McNabb 01 to Philly. It's a good guess. I mean that's right I mean Don McNabb he's got to be up there Jim Brown or Davis I mean those are the three that stand out. On Catching Up with the Cues presented by AmeriQ we're joined now by Syracuse point guard Joe Girard and Joe, first and foremost, what are you doing to pass the time right now? <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to stay busy, do whatever I can. Um, to be honest, it's a lot of video games, a lot of eating, uh, you know, lifting weights down in the basement. Um, I actually got a – me and my dad have, like, found a private gym around here, so I get to go in there, you know, four or five times a week. Uh, but like I said, the other days I'm lifting uh, pretty much every day and a lot of eating and a lot of video games for sure. <laughs> what games are you playing? I'm a big Fortnite guy. Uh, okay. yeah. His buddy, uh, you know, Sean Belby, all those guys sometimes, uh, even my guys back home. Uh, I played Madden, too. Uh, so it's probably those two games I'd say I'm on the most. Uh, Joe, getting to basketball now, what the naked eye sees and what's on television is your ability in a five-on-five -five setting. You know, we saw it in the Dome all year long. We saw it on the road, too. But you have a basket uh, to work with in this quarantine. What's the main thing that you've been working on right now in a one-on-one -on -one environment? I think, to be honest, most, mostly stay in shape, uh, you know, trying to be ahead of the curve because, you know, it's going to take a lot of guys a while to get back in shape because uh, they don't have the resources, unfortunately, that, you know, some others may have. Uh, just stay in shape, basketball shape pretty much, 
uh, just keeping, you know, my body ready. Uh, obviously just, you know, I'm thinking a lot of stuff that Jerry's, you know, been working with me and I've just brought it back here with my dad. Uh, you know, he's kind of let me, you know, work the workout uh, pretty much and, you know, do what I do. Uh, but, you know, a lot of it's come from, you know, what GMAC did with us back when I was at school. So uh, it's just, you know, a lot of the floater game, uh, a lot of the pull-ups, you know, since, you know, I'm a point guard, the ball's going to be in my hand. And, uh, you know, you got to create for others as well. So uh, it's just a lot of stuff off the dribble, keeping my handle right and uh, mainly staying in shape. Yeah, and at the highest level, I mean, so much of the conversation right now is how much guys need to prep before games are actually happening right now. And, you know, you see people like Giannis and Chris Middleton, they're saying, well, we don't have a basket right now, so we're just doing weight training and all that. Uh, another thing is communication. How much communication are you guys having uh, as a team right now? Uh, you know, we think we're close. So we were really close to year, which was really actually unique and cool. So we've always stayed in contact, uh, you know, here and there. Uh, you know, I talk to Buddy a lot, almost every day. You know, Sean Belby, like I said, we play a lot of video games together. So, uh, you know, depending on who and, uh, you know, I guess it is up and around playing or whatever, uh, you know, we've stayed in contact. But uh, we were all close, so we'll all still talk in the group chat here and there and just, you know, say what's up, mess around, joke around. But, uh, yeah, like I said, it, it was a good year just because we were all, you know, close and, you know, got along with each other. Joe, you just finished up your first year of college basketball in the ACC, and the ACC, by all accounts, is the gold standard of college basketball. Uh, what separates ACC hoops from any other league of basketball that you've played in in your entire life? Um, I think just, you know, from top to bottom, no matter who you're playing against and, you know, what team it is, got to give you 110% uh, each and every play. Um, it, it's a lot different than high school. I mean, uh, I bring this story up a lot, but we were playing Georgia Tech, and I'm, we're up 30 points. Uh, you know, I traveled. Coach Beheim, you know, ripped me about it. He, uh, you know, ripped me. Then he put me back in the game. I hit two threes in a row. I made the same travel, and he takes me out again and uh, rips me about it again. And it just went to show you that, you know, it, this is ACC basketball. Um, you, you no slip-ups no matter what. And it was kind of a, a lesson he was teaching me for sure because, let's say, the game was, you know, a three-point game rather than a 30-point game. And that could have hurt us, uh, you know, at the end of the game. So I, I kind of that's kind of where, you know, I was like, OK, this is, you know, this is the real deal. You got to you know, treat every play like it's your last and make sure that you're always focused and doing the right things. Absolutely. And Georgia Tech has some guys too, Jose Alvarado, Michael, DeVo Michael DeVoe, to name a few. But I, I know sometimes players answers to this can can differ than what, you know, a media member sees. Oh, the, the leading scorer is the hardest guy to play against in the ACC or something like that. Um, who was the best player that you competed against this year? Whew. Um, there was a lot of good players. I mean, the ACC, that's what, like you said, it's the, the premier league in the college basketball, and uh, there's a lot of good players. I think that you know, some of the guys who probably got the best of us, you know, Vernon Carey, he played really well against us. Um, uh, Luke Garza from Iowa played really against us. He's in the Big Ten. Uh, and then Cole Anthony had a really good game against us, too, when we played at the Dome. Um, I mean, those are some of them that, you know, kind of stick out to me. And, uh, you know, that I can remember is where we had a tough you know, time stopping them. But uh, all those guys we got back. <laughs> I mean, uh, Carolina, we got back eventually in the AC tournament. We didn't get to play Duke again uh, or Iowa, unfortunately. But I think we would have done a better job, you know, the second time around against those guys for sure because uh, that's what we did against everybody else. Talking with Joe Girard on catching up with the Cuse right now, and you haven't just been away from the Dome and competitive college basketball, the Mellow Center. You've been away from Syracuse University as a whole. How has the online class experience been for you to wrap up your freshman year? It's it's a lot different. I mean, you know, that's what everybody said. It was going to be an adjustment. It's going to be different. And, you know, even for the professors, it's a lot different. So, um, I mean, to be honest, though, I took an a online class, class the, the last summer. So um, I was a little, you know, I guess more, you know, uh, up to date with it uh, just because you know I could, I could I've done that before and I, I'm sure a lot of athletes have done it before too um, but you know just having a whole semester of college pretty much you know on online it was pretty hard and pretty confusing but you know we all got together uh, got through it so it wasn't you know as bad as you know it could have been. Yeah and uh, we'll get to some of the lighthearted online stuff in just a second because I know you're pretty active on TikTok right now and you're getting a ton <laughs> of questions about TikTok but before we get to that, um, you spearheaded a great reading program with a local elementary school in the Glens Falls area. Uh, you were featured on some major publications like USA Today. What sparked that idea for you? Yeah, so someone had mentioned it to me, uh, you know, right when this whole quarantine thing hit and we had to come home uh, on, you know, Instagram message. Uh, they messaged me about it and then, um, you know, it didn't really go anywhere. Uh, and then like a week later, he doesn't like when he gets the attention but my older cousin who's you know my dad's age he uh 
he contacted me. He called me and he said that he's he's gonna have his other his son, who is on my you know state championship teams, uh, bring over a book for me to read. And I gotta film. He's gonna film me, and they're gonna send it to one of the elementary schools uh, around here in Glens Falls. So I was like, okay, you know, because when he speaks, you know, he doesn't really speak a lot. <laughs> He likes doing a lot of things for the community, but he never likes getting the credit for it. So I'll try and give him some of it here. But he uh, he had the brought a little book. Uh, you know, I filmed it. I sent it to him, and he sent it to the uh, principal of one of the elementary schools here. Uh, I think they sent it out to the the district, and then from there, it just kind of people kept asking for the video, and they just kept spreading it. So I think that's just kind of how it went. It just hit one, and then kept going. Well, that was a great video to watch, Joe. Uh, now let's get to the TikToks. You ready? What you doing? <laughs> um, you have a nice, diverse portfolio of what you're putting on TikTok from, you know, dancing. Uh, you've got hooping stuff, too. Um, what sparks the ideas? Are you always the person that uh, thinks about that? Are you the mastermind or do you have some family members that are the masterminds? It depends. You know, I've seen a lot of it. Uh, you know, I think most of it just comes from me. It's just... Me doing, you know, some random stuff throughout the day. I mean, dunking on my mom was out of nowhere. She had no idea it was coming. Uh, we were actually going for a walk outside or whatever, and it just kind of happened, and, you know, it, it was pretty funny, I thought. So I put that on there, and then a lot of the other videos, there's, like, some trends that go on on TikTok. So I just got a few ideas from there, and then some of the other ones, it was just like, uh, I'm going to do this just to see how it goes, and then, it, you know, it usually works out, so. I mean, I just try to be diverse on there, like you said, and uh, just have some fun with it and try and keep keep up with uh, you know, the social media world today. The TikTok star and a true millennial point guard. Joe Girard, thank you so much for joining us, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Incredibly gracious of Joe Girard to spend some time talking with us, and he always offers so much in an interview setting, Will. Jack, I'm digging the TikTok videos from JG3. I mean, I'm loving everything I'm seeing from the Syracuse starting point guard. I'm not loving this dance that you're doing. Oh, come on. I'm sorry. Plenty of great moments this year in Syracuse Athletics. And here on Catching Up with the Qs, we want to break down some of the best. And for that, we bring in one of the co-hosts of the show, Jonathan Hoppy. Thanks, Will. And hi, everybody. Make sure to join me and my co-host, Gil Gross, next week for the second edition of Catching Up with the Qs. For now, though, we're looking back at some of those electrifying moments, and we start with a big day of lacrosse inside the Dome. First, the new number 22 led the men's team into its season opener against Colgate. Sophomore Chase Scanlon became the first player in three years to wear the storied number. He quickly showed us why he was worthy of the honor. Scanlon scored not one, not two, not three, but seven goals in his Orange debut. Not bad for a first impression, huh? Ten other players scored in a 21-14 Orange win. Later that night, the women's team kept the party going. Senior Emily Harrischuk scored seven goals of her own. As if that was not impressive enough, Harrischuk also reeled in five draw controls. That's an all-around performance that made her the clear front runner to claim the coveted Tawaraton Award. The Orange also scored 21 goals in a blowout win over Canisius. Unfortunately, we'll never know how the 2020 lacrosse seasons would have ended. If February 7th was any indication, we were in for a treat. Well, Jonathan, it's appropriate that you brought up Emily Harris Chuck's monumental days, one of the top moments of the year, because we're having her on this edition of Catching Up With The Cues. The star of the Syracuse women's lacrosse team, Emily, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And let me start off by asking, what have you been up to and uh, how have you been doing? I've been doing awesome. Um, I've been trying to go back to my somewhat normal summer workout routine, um, just trying to keep busy. And you're coming to us from your home in Victor right now. And you actually commute the 90 minutes from your home in Victor, New York to Syracuse during the school year. So even before this quarantine, you've been used to spending quite a bit of time with your family. So surely this hasn't been uh, much of an adjustment for you, huh? No, not too big of an adjustment, but it has been you know, tough not being able to see my teammates every day. That was always the highlight of my day. Even though I live at home, it's always my absolutely favorite thing to do, drive in and, and be with everyone. Are there any fun hobbies that you've taken up during the quarantine? I'm not that big of a reader. However, I have started reading just to give me something to do, which has been nice. 
Uh, I have four siblings. I'm one of four and we've been working on a, a Disney puzzle downstairs on the kitchen table. So that's also been something to pass the time along. And your siblings, they play lacrosse too, right? Have you been playing and practicing with them? Yes, my brothers both play. My sister's a dancer. However, just the other day, I, I got her to come out and play catch with me. So we had fun out there. And during this move to online classes, other than lacrosse, what do you miss most about Syracuse? I just miss seeing my teammates. Um, even if I couldn't go out and practice with them every day, just being able to spend time with them in the locker room, um, see them on campus, it's, I really do miss it. The NCAA recently came out and announced that they're going to give all spring athletes the option to take an extra year of eligibility. And you recently announced that you will take that extra year. What went into that decision to return for your fifth season? A lot went into the decision. Um, you know, initially it was a, a quick, easy answer of saying, definitely I'm doing whatever I can to, to come back. But then when you sit back and you look at everything else that goes into it, it was a lot. Um, even with the little details coming out from the NCAA and having the university get to work um, with everything that they had to do on their end. But in the end, I'm really grateful that everything worked out and I'm beyond excited to be able to come back for one more year. And the season unfortunately came to a close earlier than you had expected, but you still had an absolutely fantastic season, 39 goals in eight games, led the country in goals. What did you learn about yourself this season? Um, that's a good question. I think in the end, it comes down to just playing with my teammates. I think this year, more than any of the other years, it's been one where me and my teammates have just been on the same page. Um, on the offensive end, we were clicking like we, we haven't been in the last few years. It's been next level across. It's been, you know, just thinking on the same page, knowing exactly what Meg Carney's thinking or Meg Tyrell's thinking and just having it happen. So I think all of that goes back to my teammates on the offensive end and, and the defense pushing me every single day in practice to be the best that I can be. Let's talk about your coach for a second, because I couldn't help but thinking about last night watching the last dance on ESPN, that the Michael Jordan of lacrosse is Gary Gaten. I mean, does that ever hit you that you're playing for arguably the greatest lacrosse player of all time, that he's your coach? All the time. He's absolutely amazing. And I remember thinking back to the first time I was at camp and I, how can you not know who Gary Gate is? So even growing up, yes, I'd watch videos of Kayla Trainer, but how can you not sit there and watch old YouTube clips of, of Gary Gate? So initially when he first walked out to give the camp opening announcements, I felt like I was, you know, looking at a celebrity. Um, but he's, he's absolutely the best. And I wouldn't want to play for anyone else. Um, he's an amazing player, and now he's an absolutely amazing coach. You ever try to recreate some of those air gate shots in practice? Yes, we, we try. There's a lot of us who try, but I, I don't know how he does it. Even when he is out there playing, it's not just an air gate. He'll throw something else crazy at us, and my jaw still drops. I look at you know, Coach Caitlin and everyone else, and it's, it's fun to watch him play. And the team is so tight. It always looks like y'all are having so much fun out there. How would you describe the team chemistry? It's, it's awesome. We just, we love playing lacrosse and we love playing it together. Um, this year we had a, a team mantra and it was all aboard. So, you know, being able to play with a group of girls who love lacrosse just as much as I do and all be on the same team and be on the same ship are, you know, going through the season, we, we knew that we had a lot of away games. So we saw it as, you know, us jumping on a ship and traveling across the country. So it's, it's so much fun to be out there with them. And I love every single one of them. Let's role play here. Someone tells you that Emily Harris Chuck is the best lacrosse player in the nation. How do you respond? Uh, there's, there's a lot of great players out there. I, I, it's, it's crazy to have people say that to me, but I just want to go out there and play lacrosse. It's all I really care about. You've done incredible things during your time here at SU, but you've said again and again that a national championship is your ultimate goal. You'll have another shot at it next season. Pretty much everyone's coming back. How fired up are you just thinking about that? It gets me so excited. Even during a time like this with all the craziness going on every day, I, I wake up with a smile on my face knowing that 
I get one more chance to go back and win with my team and, and bring home something to Syracuse that Syracuse doesn't have yet in the women's lacrosse program. So it's, it's a lot of good, exciting nerves and I'm just excited for another year to get back. Really appreciate Emily Harris Chuck's time. And Jack, I know you're a big Chicago Bulls fan and there's really no doubt in my mind that Gary Gate is the Michael Jordan of lacrosse. You've got Air Jordan here, you've got Air Gate here. And I totally understand Emily saying that she thought that Coach Gate had some celebrity status when she got there. I don't blame her for being a tad starstruck, but you know, maybe Gary Gate should view Emily Harris Chuck as a celebrity now based on her raw talent. Absolutely agree. Rolling along, more to come on the other side on Catching Up with the Cues, presented by AmeriQ. We heard from Jonathan Hoppy earlier in the show, but it's not Catching Up with the Cues if you don't have the other host, right? Now we welcome in Gil Gross for his favorite memory uh, of the Syracuse Athletics calendar. Well, thanks, Jack. Hey, everyone. Make sure you join us for next week's show with my co-host, Jonathan Hoppy. But for now, we are looking back at some of the best moments from the sports year from the Orange. And my moment is probably the best play that we saw in all of Syracuse sports, any sport. Women's hoops. This game is in overtime, clock winding down. Syracuse up one against eighth-ranked Florida State. One stop wins the game for the Orange. Kaya Gillespie won't let that happen, and the clock reads point six. They'll change it to point eight. Timeout, Coach Q, and it's time to whip up something good. There's eight tenths of a second. Surely not enough time for Syracuse to get a shot. Freshman Tisha Hyman on the inbound. There's no way, right? Right? Wrong. Emily Engsler finishes the alley-oop at the buzzer for SU's first top 10 victory of the season. How about the play design by Coach Q? Surely it was hard to come up with. Coach, tell us how. We was in an outback and I met Ronnie Enoch and we was just drawing up plays and we had all these long plays, but we never had anything on the side. So I drew a one side out play and luckily it was the one that I drew up because I could remember it. Because if I, if I had to draw up one of those Long plays that I had, like nine of those, I probably wouldn't have remembered any of those plays, but this was the one that I remember. Okay, Gail, thank you. I didn't think Outback Steakhouse and health in any way would ever be in the same sentence, but here we go. Uh, now to another contributor to this show who will be on here constantly. We go to Michelle Knezevic and her features six feet apart. Ready? Okay, let's do this thing. So welcome to Six Feet Apart. Today I have joined with me Claire Cook, rising Hi. senior on the Syracuse field hockey teams. Claire, where are you checking in from today? I'm in Fairfax, Virginia right now. So it's pretty warm and about like seven hours from Syracuse. Okay, so you're in the southern weather, so you're getting the nice weather during this, but I know you have a packed house. Yeah. How is that going and how many siblings do you have? Tell everyone. So I have seven siblings, um, the third oldest, so I have five younger and two older, but right now there's only six of us in the house, so my two older sisters are gone, and so it's just me and all my younger siblings. It's been a little chaotic, but we're making it work. <laughs> so if anyone thinks their house is chaotic, Claire's is probably more chaotic. How many yeah. times to the grocery store a week? I bet your mom's just trying to fill the house with food for you guys. Yes, like... I think maybe every two days my dad goes to the grocery store. So it's been, yeah, it's been a lot, but I wouldn't change it at all. Like, I think it's kind of like a blessing in disguise. Like I get to hang out with my siblings and spend time with them that I normally I'm at school. So it's been fun, but just chaotic. So what have you guys been doing to bond? Obviously you're using this time. I saw maybe an egg hunt on Easter. Yeah. What else have you guys been doing all together? Uh, well, I make a lot of my, well, not a lot. I guess two of my siblings run with me, um, some workouts and kind of just watching movies and stuff. Like, I mean, there's not that much to do, but we get to spend time together when we're all not doing school, which has been fun. So you're a TikTok family. Have you guys been doing TikToks with your siblings and everything? <laughs> I'm personally not a TikTok person, but all my younger siblings love it. They do all the dances and stuff and, and whatnot. Maybe you'll make a celeb appearance, no? <laughs> Maybe. I'm not that much of a dancer, but. Um, so I saw on the Syracuse field hockey page, you guys were doing like the skill, the stick drill skills things. Mm -hmm. um, 
Did you send in any videos for that? Yeah, we kind of send videos in for our team kind of each week. So it kind of gets picked on which one's like the best for the week. Um, but you can do like actual skills and then also like stick tricks and stuff. So it's been fun to be creative um, and stuff like that, so. So who's got the best on the team so far? I would say Plune. Okay, yeah. second best, best. Sec any, a close second? Second? Mm, I'd say CJ. Okay, yeah. uh, a lot of the girls on your team have also made like little turf and small pitches in your backyard. Have you tackled that um, activity yet? Yeah, well I, I had to, because I don't really have any flat grass or anything. So, I, but thankfully I have a carport. So I bought some turf from Amazon, um, which is a little smaller than expected, but I kind of just brought like a, a carpet out because you have to have something rather than just like concrete. Otherwise your stick will just get torn apart. But other than that, we kind of just, at least I kind of just keep up with my running because that's the best way for me to stay in shape. Um, and then doing as much like lifting as I can. And then you're making, obviously you're making your little siblings run with you, you know, the future field hockey stars potentially. Do any of them play too? Um, two of my sisters play, but I, one of them's more into lacrosse. She's looking to go play lacrosse um, in the future. So. That'll be, that's exciting. Maybe, maybe Syracuse. I know. She's Here like, watch out. I know. <laughs> Um, so what about anything else? Anything else you're doing just to keep busy, kind of past time? I mean, now that we're ending classes, the semester's ending, do you have anything planned, crafts, DIYs? I mean, I look at Pinterest all the time. I'm on my phone so much. Um, but for the most part, I've been cooking a lot, actually, like trying to find some healthy alternatives to stuff um, just because I have the time and like it. Everyone's always hungry in my house, so why not? <laughs> there you go. You can help your mom out. So Claire, cook the cook. Yeah. <laughs> so we all need your motivation when it comes to working out, cooking, eating healthy. Um, but fortunate for you, you do have your senior season to look forward to. I'm definitely looking forward to meeting all the new people that are coming in. We have a pretty decent sized class, but also just like being with my team is one of my most favorite things about being a part of Syracuse is our, our team is just so special to me and I love being with them. So I have that shark like mentality so Heck yeah. that you want to do first thing post quarantine. If I'm at home, I think maybe going to get some ice cream. That's one of my favorite things to do. First thing on the list, ice yeah. cream. <laughs> but once I'm back in Syracuse, I'm definitely going to get some burgers. Oh, Burgers Bagels. What is your go-to Burgers Bagel order, Claire? I get the Western on and everything. Okay, so. It's a game changer. It's a game changer. Well, Claire Cook, you just went six feet apart. Thank you so much. Thanks so much to Claire Cook for taking the time for that, that interview. And a huge thank you to Michelle Knesevic as well. You can hear Michelle's six feet apart constantly on this platform right here on Catching Up with the cues. But before we end the show, why don't we go back to the top of the show because you posed a really interesting trivia question, Will Scott. Who was the highest drafted orange football player in the NFL draft? You needed the name, the team, the year, and the pick. So I said Donovan McNabb went second or third overall to Philly in 2001. I know that was wrong. You said Ernie Davis. What's the right answer, Will? So the correct answer is Ernie Davis, but number one overall to the Washington Redskins, not the Cleveland Browns. He was traded to the Browns after the Redskins picked him in the year, not 1968. I was way off there, 1962. But hey, at least I got the player right. Same decade, and I think Robert Duvall said it in Kicking and Screaming when he was playing tetherball with Will Ferrell. He said, what's it called when you almost win? That's right, losing. So I'm sorry, Will, you're, you're a loser on episode one. Oh, well, you went two for four. I went 0 of four, but that ends catching up with Cuse for this week. Well, really solid first show. Some great interviews. Yeah, had a blast catching up with Joe Girard and Emily Harris, Chuck, and we definitely look forward to catching up with more Syracuse athletes over the course of the next couple weeks. Uh, two new hosts for next week's rendition. It'll be Jonathan Hoppy and Gil Gross. So for now, uh, with Will Scott and our entire production team in Syracuse, I'm Jack McMullen. This has been Catching Up with the Cuse, presented by American.